once you step into the kingdom of God and you suffer for Christ, that is one of the greatest feelings. Amen. Honestly, it is. I, you know, that's why Jesus said rejoice when you're persecuted. Rejoice. Leap for joy. Amen. You know? And a lot of people read that scripture and they've never experienced it. So they're always telling me that scripture because they've never <coughs> tasted it themselves. But it's like the Bible says you're blessed when you're persecuted. So I just pray a blessing over you of persecution. <laughs> Receive some. Receive some. Hey, it's really great. No, I'm serious. Yesterday somebody cussed me out. And all it did was prepare me for the rest of the day. Like, oh good, okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> because this guy said, Shut up! Leave them alone! And I turned around and said, Listen up, bucko! And I just, I went after him because he was so prideful. You know, when somebody does that to me, I'm on the streets, okay? It's raw. It's like, you know, we're, we're soldiers. So I'm not trying to be nice. You know, if he comes at me like that, I'm going to come at him like that with a strong word. Because the Bible says, we're, uh, this is a sword of the Spirit. Amen. And uh, that guy didn't need, sir, I'm sorry, what's wrong? You need inner healing? <laughs> uh, Jesus loves you. <laughs> he just wants to kiss you. <laughs> no, that's not what you say to that man. Because he's prideful. And he needs to be called out on it. You know? And um, I, I definitely got my message across to him. Repent. And if you don't turn to Jesus, you will burn in hell. Have a nice day. <laughs> I didn't say have a nice day. I didn't say have a nice day. I didn't say that. But it sounds good. Maybe the next person. <laughs> Now, I, I was preaching in England. I was preaching in England, and I love England. I put it back in my schedule because they just, they're just fun. And uh, they definitely speak English. It's English. So I'm preaching in Liverpool, where the Beatles are from. You know, John Lennon's wrong. You know, he wrote a song, Imagine There's No Heaven. Well, he's wrong, every one of you. He's wrong. Imagine there is a heaven. Imagine there is a hell fire. They always do it like that. Fire. Fire. Because it gets people's attention. And uh, so this so this guy shows up. There's a nice little crowd all around me. And this guy and I got a shirt that says fear God, give him all the glory. And this, this guy shows up. He starts throwing wine all over my white shirt. Man, I'm covered in wine. Next thing I know, this little teenager shows up. She starts chunking popcorn at me. And then she starts throwing strawberries at me. And uh, I got a word from God. I said, what's the matter? Your daddy leave you? And she broke. She started crying. And immediately, I started giving her mercy and grace and, and turning it immediately and nobody will ever love you like Jesus. He will not leave you. He's there for you. But she had to be broken. She had to be broken because I said, you're not mad at me. You don't know me. You're mad at God. And that's what happens a lot with the fatherless generation. When the father leaves, they... It's like, well, is God going to be there for me? My dad's not there, so is God going to be there? And uh, that's the message we have is that Father, Father God, you know, your earthly father may not be there, but God the Father will be. And He, he cares for you so deeply. And uh, I turned it. I had to. I had to turn it quick because when I gave her that hard word, I knew it was not going to be easy. 
that's, that's part of compassion. I'm just going to go ahead and go into this next scripture. I'm trying to find a good transition. You know, when you, when you give a hard word, there's always humor helps ease that horse peel that's about to go down. Luke 14, girls. Jesus, girls. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, girls of Hong Kong. Yeah. Jesus. Why not just get a sign that says Jesus really, really super big? And you girls just march through the city with a Jesus sign singing. We're the Jesus girls. <laughs> we want to tell you he's awesome. Because you, know, you know what? Muslims can't do that about Allah. They, they get on their carpet. They pray. But what they want to know is, does Allah hear me? Does Allah love me? Well, we know Jesus loves us. He adores us. Man, He rescued us, redeemed us, changed us, blessed us. God saved my, my child from an abortion. You know how that grips my heart? The Bible says, uh, not when you've been, oh, the, the goodness of God leads man to repentance. And that's why I got saved. Because there were certain things God had done that were so overwhelming of kindness to me. It was love the church couldn't even give me. So I served God today, not because of, I found a great church or I, I met a... I have never met one Christian that was so Christ-like I wanted to follow Jesus, ever. Why? Because there is nobody. Now, we can have attributes of Him and we can be Christ-like. That's not to down the body of Christ. But I'm saying, I am a Christian today not because somebody else was so Christ-like. I am a Christian today because of Jesus. Amen. So my hope is not in another person that they were so awesome that they'll never fall. I've had my son's youth pastor fail. Oh, I had another senior pastor fall while my pastor was suffering with cancer. The guy he put in charge, he was having an affair for years. Maybe he was a great actor. But my, my hope was never in that guy or anybody else. I followed Jesus because of Jesus. And maybe that's why there are certain things I can do for the Lord that are radical because I know He's always watching me. And I know when it's all said and done, I will stand before Him. See? So, if He asks me to do something hard, maybe it won't be so hard. Maybe fear is a big lie. Maybe it's a lie. You know, the Bible says fear of man is a snare. It's a snare. It's a trap. Because there's something inside of every one of you girls that you want to do for God right now. You're thinking about it right now. What could I do? You're thinking about people you want to reach now. You're thinking about the streets. Some of you are even excited. You know, I'm going to start a new ministry. I'm going to do something. 